Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. We're here with another video. And today will be another interesting one as we'll be doing a tutorial on how to do selections with Affinity Photo. So there are quite a few ways to make selections in Affinity Photo. So in this video, I'll be demoing the various tools available for you to make selections to help you on your next big edit. So let's get right into this. So first, what is a selection? So in Affinity Photo, they call a selection a pixel selection. So a pixel selection is simply a drawn area on your image bounded by a flashing dashed line, often called marching ants. So a selection is created for various reasons. First and foremost, it's to perform local adjustments or to allow you to limit editing such that you can make the edit within that selection area only. You also use a selection to selectively copy pixels like if you're gonna copy some pixel from one layer to another. You also use a selection as a precursor to creating a mask layer. So a mask layer is another way to limit the editing and selections can be converted to mask layers and vice versa. So those are the purposes of selections. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the types of selection tools. And these selection tools include the selection brush, flood select tool, the marquee tool, and the freehand selection tool. So let's start off with the selection brush. So just a few characteristics of the selection brush. Basically with the selection brush, you select a region by painting. This is the most common selection tool that you're going to be using. By default, edge detection is enabled. So with edge detection, similar color values are selected even if it's not directly painted. The number of pixels selected is determined by the width of the brush. Okay, so let's start off with the selection brush. So to use a selection brush, you simply have to click the selection brush tool. Let's say in this photo, I want to brighten up this rock formation here. It's a bit too dark, but I don't want it to affect the other areas. So if you notice, if I do a global adjustment here, you can see that the areas around it are also affected, not just the rock formation. And so it makes the image very low contrast, which is not what really what we want. So this is a situation where you'd want to do a selection just on the rock formation so we can target that. Okay, so one thing to note when you're using the selection brush tool is the snap to edges option is selected by default. So what this means is when you brush into an area, the selection will expand to include similar color value pixels to those selected, even if those are not directly painted. So what this means is, if I paint over this, you see that? It actually snaps to the edges here, even though I did not paint directly over here. See, it actually snap into the edge of this rock formation. So that's one of the behaviors of this snap to edges function. So the benefit of the snap to edges is it makes it faster to, to do the selections because it will actually expand the selection. Now you can see as I painted over this portion here, it might make uh, some mistakes if your brush size is too large. So the benefit of a larger brush, it will paint a larger area in one stroke and therefore more pixels are selected. So a larger brush will also give Affinity Photo a larger sample size in which to determine how far the selection should expand. In the situation like this where as you brush, it's actually it's making mistakes. What you can do is you can actually decrease the brush size here. So you can do that by pressing the bracket key. Just lower it. And then as you select, you can see now it does a better job. It won't expand too far. You limit the expansion of the selection. Right? So let's just go ahead and continue brushing through here. All right, so if there are any mistakes, that's okay. We're going to correct that later on. But let's just go ahead and brush through that. Okay, so that's pretty decent, but obviously it has made some mistakes. So um, we didn't want to include these this people in this selection. So what we can do is just, just go and choose subtract. So there are two options. One is add. So you can hover over it to know what it is. So right now add is selected. Let's click on subtract. And then we can just brush on these errors here. So I'm just going to brush on here. Now in the situation where you want to correct errors, it might be better to just not snap to edges because we just want to select those areas which are under this brush. 
meaning you don't want the selection to expand past what is beneath the brush. So what we can do here is we can just uncheck snap to edges and what will happen there is there won't be any expansion of the selection. Let me just make this bigger. So I'm just going to unselect this like so. Okay, I'm just make the brush size smaller here and unselect this person right here. All right, so that looks fairly decent. So we have that selection. And so what we can do now is make some adjustments, right? So to do that, we want to add an adjustment layer. So the easiest way to add an adjustment layer is to choose this button right here, which, which if you hover it, it'll say adjustments, and then just click on it. And basically you can choose the kind of adjustment. So the best one and the most targeted one for this situation is shadows and highlights. So let's just click on shadows and highlights here, and then we can adjust the shadows like so, right? Brighten it up a little bit. There you go, okay? So you notice that when I add the new adjustment, it'll create an, an adjustment layer, okay? So you have to be careful when you have more than one layer, which layer is actually selected. So next, let's add now a sharpen adjustment to make this rocks a little bit more detailed. So what I'm gonna do now is First, make sure that the adjustment is applied to the right layer, which is this image right here. So right now you can see Affinity will select this adjustment layer, which is not what we want. So I want to apply a clarity adjustment to this rock formation. So what I wanna do is to click on the background, make sure that this is selected, and then you can apply now what you call a live filter here, okay, which is basically an adjustment layer as well. But uh, it has, options for sharpening so let's go into that so sharpening is actually here unsharp mask all right and then let's just increase the increase that and let's also add a clarity adjustment so again make sure the layer is selected and then we can just add a clarity adjustment here okay let me just zoom in so i could see the effect all right so you can see now how nicely it brings back the detail as you can see, each adjustment in Affinity Photo will create a new adjustment layer, right? That's how it works. So a few selection functions which are useful. First is deselecting. So to deselect a selection, you can actually go here to select and then just deselect here, all right? You could also use the shortcut Command D or Control D to get rid of that. Now to bring back a selection from a mask, so by the way, there is a mask created here. If you can't see it, you can also option click on the thumbnail, right? Then you can actually see the mask that's created from the selection, right? Now, if you want to bring back the selection from this mask, you can command click on the thumbnail. So just make sure you're on the thumbnail, then command click or control click, and you should see it. Again, command D to deselect, and then command click on the mask to bring back the selection. Right? So you can see this works for any of these masks. So if I go to this one here, command click, I bring it back. Okay, that's pretty useful. Okay, so you could also do it through the menu. So if I want to bring back the selection here, you can go to select and then reselect. All right, another selection operation which is useful is moving the selection. The first thing you could do is move the pixels that have been selected. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that the pixel layer is selected. Then you just choose the move tool here. There you go. Okay. All right. But anyway, you could move that by using the move tool if the layer is selected. Okay. So let's move on to the next selection tool.